the very corny jokes, beaming together to scare the girls, <coughs> chasing you with a spray bottle, cup coordinating with you. Well, let's go on and on. Cooking with you or, in, or cooking for you was enjoyable. At times when I thought a dish or a smoothie experiment didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, you enjoyed it. You know, it's crazy how you were telling me that you wanted to spend more time with the girls the day before your tragic accident. I even remember you were wolfing down a Big Mac. Hours later, my worst fear came to pass. However, I thought that you would bounce back. Just like you always bounce back. And it hurt to my heart to see you in such a horrible condition for 18 months and 13 days. Being paralyzed from the neck down <coughs> with major brain trauma, with a trach and a feeding tube, not being able to speak, strokes and seizures, and on and on and on. Made this marriage journey quite rough. But I made a vow, a vow to you, and a vow to God. We had them to hold. From this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. So that this part, according to God's holy belief, and there too, I pledge thee my faith. Thank you for taking me my, 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 my. on journey Lord, of a lifetime. My God, my God. I love
just want to add one more thing as a part of the Viking conversation. The last week when he was at OSU Hospital and he was about to be transitioned to hospice, um, there was a few of us there, and Lori came in and um, she said, Brother Otis, you still a Viking? And he could, his eyes were not, he was not fully alert. Um, he didn't really open his eyes much at that time, but he blinked so ferociously. <laughs> we like, he's still a Viking. This time, if there are any ministers in the midst that would like to, any dignitaries would like to come and say a word in regards to Otis, you would come at this time, maybe two minutes, if you would. Any ministers or any dignitaries that would like to come at this time, two minutes, please. And if you could announce who you are. Good morning, Sykes. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Gregory Boatwright, and I work with Otis at UPS. Um, when I first met Otis, I had just transitioned from the military. So my thinking was kind of jacked up. Mm -hmm. And so when I met Otis, Otis first approached me as if I knew him for years. And the first thing he said, he asked me what my name was, and I asked him what his name was. And I couldn't help but notice his accent and how humble and meek he was. So every time that I would see Otis, every morning, I would say, how you doing, Mr. Otis? And we'd always say something about the Lord, that he was thankful for the day that the Lord had given him. And he would ask the Lord to just keep blessing him. Otis was the kind of person that when you met him, he made you feel like you knew him forever. And I would talk to him about what he wanted to accomplish in life and all. And he asked me, is there anything that he could do for me? I said, yeah, why don't you let me borrow that accent? <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool accent. <laughs> but the thing that I really got to know about Otis was his love for God. And sometimes as men and Vikings, we kind of think that, you know, we have to suppress our love for God. But when you saw Otis, mm -hmm. you saw God. When you saw Otis, you saw the words that he lived by. And I, I say to Vanessa, I say to Victoria, your children and all, I can't tell you when. I can't even tell you how. But you're going to get through this. Your day is dark now. But tomorrow the sun will come out. Amen. And for Otis's girls, he will always be with you. In closing, I like to say, I think that sometimes we don't really appreciate the things that we have. We take a lot of things for, for granted. And when she told me that she lost him on Thanksgiving, that night I sat down and I was uneasy, I was, I was disturbed. And my wife said, what's wrong? And I said, you know, sometimes we don't really appreciate the things that we have. Sometimes the things we ask for are the things we don't need, and we don't, need, we don't ask for the things that we need. So I made a vow. I told you this on the phone. And I'm going to tell you again. My Christmas is going to your family. Um, I spoke with your brother earlier about the arrangements, mm -hmm. but the least that I can do is make sure your four girls have Christmas. Aww. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sarah. 
and his love for others. Um, his smile was infectious. You ever you see Otis, he, he would brighten up, he would bang. One of the things I loved about him so much was that, as was already said, he would open up his home to so many others and reach out to so many others. But I do have some fond memories of him, uh, especially in regards to, of course we know the wife loves him and the mother loves him. But I want to thank the Lord for his brother and sister Robinson. My we love with Otis so much. Amen. They took him in. My they showed him so many things. Otis, you know, he, he came, and Otis was willing to learn. That's one good thing I can say about him. Otis was willing to learn. He was willing to work. And, of course, Brother Robin and Sister Needy, they are workers. And they're going to teach you how to work. And so, in helping Otis on so many things, uh, Otis would stay with him. He would live with him. And he was living with them there on Wittenberg. And a fond memory that I have of him, he came in one day. I was in here. And he came and got me. He said, Brother Bruce. Well, I'll say it like he said. He said, Brother Bruce. He said, can you do something for me? I said, what's that, Brother Otis? He said, could you talk to Brother Robinson? I said, what, what's going on, Otis? He said, I keep leaving the lever up on the shower in the basement. So when Brother Robin comes in and turns on the water, the cold water hits him. And I ask him to forgive me, but he doesn't believe me. <laughs> I'm going to try to bar in peace, okay? So I was like, okay, I can handle this. Brother Robin, you know. Now, one thing about Brother Robin. If you don't know Brother Robin, Brother Robin, if, he, if he's going to show you mercy, he'll say, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, now. Amen, amen, amen. Well, now, we're going to show some mercy. But if you're not going to get mercy, Brother Robin starts shaking his head, and it turns sideways, almost like in disbelief. He didn't, amen, do. Dude, amen. So I took him in there and I said, Brother Robin, you know, Otis is really sorry for leaving the lever up on the shop. So I was waiting on Brother Robin's response and it came very quickly. His head started shaking. The he said, no, he is not sorry. I said, Brother Robin, he's sorry. He said, no, he's not sorry. He wasn't going to be sorry until Brother Otis started putting that lever down on that closet. And I'm sorry. But Brother Robin loved him so much and they invested so much into him. But when he bought this house up the street, Brother Robin and Sister Nini worked tirelessly with him to get it ready for his wife and his children. Love Brother Otis so much. Uh, the last week that we was with him, the last thing I wrote in this book was very plain and very simple. Love and prayers always. Family, me to you all. You will always have our loving prayers. All of you. If you need us, just give us a call. God bless you, family. Now we have a selection. Where will you be a million years from now? We must hasten.
we, we stand at this time. There's a uh, who just comes. Brother Scott, Kelly, could you offer prayer? As the eulogy comes, Minister Lee Hampton from Jackson, Michigan. We bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, we're so thankful for the Lord for this opportunity to come before you once again. Father God, we appreciate, Lord, how we are now sitting in your presence, Lord God. Father God, Lord, we eagerly awaiting, Lord God, Father, what you have laid on the man of God's heart, Lord. Yes. And Father God, we ask you, Lord God, Father, to help us to all consider where will you be, Lord God. Father God, he says you will be somewhere, Lord. So help us to sit attentive and listen, Lord God, to what you've laid on the man of God's heart. Bless Brother Lee. Yes. Father, may he not lose one thought, but get across what you've laid on his heart. Now bless us all. Bless the family. In Christ's name. Amen. Second Corinthians 5, 7 will be the text of what the Lord is using. Send our condolences to So I need it, brother. Mr. Roosevelt, you raised a wonderful son. His family, what a beautiful family. What beautiful reflections. Since Victoria has spoken several times, we just appreciate it. You and I love how you read those vows, how you honored those vows. Beautiful girls. A father of ten, six girls. I could only imagine those girls need our prayers growing up, but they come from good stock. I appreciate the mother who stopped life once. Brother Otis was in the accident. How you didn't just call, you didn't just visit, but you came and you stayed. That spoke values about your dedication to your child. As it was mentioned, the Robinson, Sister Juanita, spoke earlier this week. She said, I loved him like I loved Nathan, like I loved Tony. That's right. And it showed. Yeah. You poured into him when we were young men. Growing up together uh, in the faith, staying at Brother Otis' house was a blessing, but we saw how much you guys poured into him. His house was in order, like Brother Robinson would teach. Everything was in his place. It was hard working, but that's a lesson. Yes. When you're young and you handle yourself in such a way, those that are older want to invest where they'll get a return on their investment. So when you handle yourself in a certain way, it will cause those a means to invest in us. We appreciate Sister Terry, prayer warrior, being there for your daughter and those children. We appreciate you praying your daughter and the family through. And Brother Otis, hospitality, meekness, humility, quiet spirit, all of that has been spoken. But as I was preparing his eulogy, we began to think of his life and how he wasn't the loudest in the room. He wasn't the one with all the verbiage, this, that, and the other. But when he spoke, you listened. When Brother Otis spoke or when he shared words, you would stop what you're doing and you would pay attention. If we were all sitting around after the fellowship eating service in his home, like they bought out, he cooked for everyone, everyone loved to stay with him. He may be the last one to speak, but when he spoke, you listen. One verse of scripture, verse number 10, 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 10. For we must all appear before the judgment. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone may receive. That everyone may receive. For the things done in his body. The things done in his body. According to that he had done. According to that he had done. Whether it be good. Whether it be good. Or bad. One day we're going to stand before God and we will give an account of the things done in body, whether they be good or they be bad. When I was younger, I enjoyed going to the few, uh, to the graveyard. That's where we sled at the graveyard. And we had a custom. We would go around to the various graves and we would look. We wanted to look at the graves and we wanted to see which one had the oldest date. The first date we would look. Look at this one. It's from 1942. And we would go a little bit further and we look at another one. Look at this one. It's from 1931. We would go a little bit further and we would go over. Look at this one. It's from 1910. We would go a little bit further and we'd look. Look at this one. It's from 1892. We would go a little bit further and it was 
some graves on the ground. And a bunch of them said 1865, 1866, 1867, 1860. They were from the Civil War. After the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, we seen that. And it felt like we were touching history. Then we would go and we would look at the grave and we would say, let's look at the first date and last date and see which one has the biggest gap. And we would see one, this one is from 1904 to 1986. This one is from 1912 to 1979. This one is from 1878 until 1974. They almost made 100. And we would do that. And we would see which one had the largest tombstone. And we would look at this, that, and the other. Right down the street from where I lived was Oak Hill Cemetery. In this one cemetery was W.K.K. 